cool. All right. Um, so today we're going to be, uh, Jean Gabriel and myself are going to be talking about uh, resolving secrets uh, references via one password CLI. And this MR is just a good example of us, uh, of changes that touch a lot of different services and application services. And it goes through the whole sort of authentication process where I've done quite a bit of refactoring around that. Um, so I'll just talk through the MR a little bit. And then uh, what Jean Gabriel and I need to do is just go through the remaining comments and feedback and sort of uh, see what could be good for follow-up in a, a, a secondary uh, MR, like follow-up MR, or what's a good candidate for being addressed right now before we go ahead and uh, look at merging this feature. Okay. Um, and so what I'll do here is I'll open up a docs MR and I'll talk through the process as a customer to start. Um, And if I go to my assigned MRs instead of my review requests, what we can see is there's a draft documentation MR that I've created, and there's a review app for this as well. So if I open up the review app here, I should be able to get, if I go to the editor extensions, I go to JetBrains. And so in the docs review, uh, folks who aren't familiar with the docs process, whenever you up, uh, make changes, docs are sort of live inside of the monolith repo, the uh, GitLab org slash GitLab uh, project. And so inside of this project, um, you can make the changes and mark down for our documentation. And then you reach out to our tech writing uh, reviewers, um, such as Amy, and then you can um, make the changes necessary. And so in this case, what I've done is I've documented the feature for one password CLI. Um, the prerequisites are that you have to have one password app installed on your desktop. You have to have the one password CLI installed, and then you have to go through the their documentation and process for configuring it. And so what I've done is I've in the documentation I just describe that if you're already using the CLI, one of the 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 existing secret reference you'll use is expected to be uh the o op uh, private personal access token slash token secret reference. And so if we just go to the 1Password docs, we can see here that using the 1Password docs, this is what happens if you're using the GitLab CLI. And what I've done in this MR is I've introduced that functionality to JetBrains. And so that here's an example of how that looks. And so whenever you open the JetBrains extension, instead of going to the system keychain, um, based on whatever you configured in the project settings, it will instead uh, request the password from 1Password, one, uh, one and it will do it OP read using the 1Password CLI. Um, and so it'll execute that inside of the JetBrains process. And then what that will do is it'll cause a prompt to say that the JetBrains IDE application wants access to uh, through CLI to the GitLab uh, credentials. And so that uh, that's here, uh, here that's because we've set up to use the, the same secret reference as one password CLI. Um, you can also give any arbitrary secret reference and it'll read the password through one password and you'll be prompted to approve that. So inside, uh, what that looks like for inside of the editor is it, uh, if I could just also restart the process. And so we can see here my sandbox instance of JetBrains is opening. And we can see here that my project is starting and I get it prompted to allow access to, to the GitLab setup. I can use my biometric auth as my factor instead of putting my one password password in. And you can see here that uh, previously I'd saved an invalid password here. So the secret reference is, uh, it complains that it's unable to read that secret reference. If I update my project settings, we can see here that I added some garbage at the end. So if I then apply this, we can see that uh, the validation here, we know that's like a valid format. If I break the formats of this, we try to apply it, it will fail. Go ahead there. So if we apply it, it passes validation, and then it will then use the correct password. So at this stage, then um, you're able to use the, uh, the existing features, uh, such as code suggestions in the digital chat window, and it will use the credentials from one password instead of storing them in the system keychain. And so that sort of like sums up the the changes from MR itself. And so we can do next probably is uh, walk through the MR and comments on it and what uh, areas the MR has changed. 
All right. Cool. And yeah, so this this is the process we did following the docs. Um, and then we can see here, we end up changing uh, quite a few classes. And so these classes are uh, sort of like go through different areas. So one of the, the classes touched here would be project startup. Um, where previously we were using the system keychain or the, the system password store. So JetBrains is default uh, mechanism for... So if we search for persisting states, so persisting sensitive data, um, the, the password safe is what we end up using for the token utility. And so previously we were calling onto the token utility whenever it changes, uh, whenever we were requesting the password. So then it would, re it would make a system call and read from the system keygen. I've updated this to use the pad provider class. Um, the pad provider is the interface that we have um, that we could potentially move to service going forward. But uh, that pad provider interface will now do the logic of, hey, do I provide a, a personal access token through one password? Or do I provide the personal access token through um password safe itself so we can see here by default what we're going to do is we're going to go and get the singleton uh reference one of the comments in the summer that we'll see is right now <laughs> what i've done is i've like used this one password secret reference dot current what i recommend we move towards doing is just calling the like the persistent like project settings and then getting that reference from there so but what it's doing here is we have uh such a conditional saying hey when 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 like when this uh secret reference is null or empty, then default to using the system keychain, which will is an abstraction there for the password safe, or it will use the one password secret reference um based on the set of the string that was inside of the settings. Uh and then here we have some logic to an abstraction just to say if it's a keychain. Uh, log things from the keychain and then just return the value, which is a string because it's stored as soon as we write it from the keychain. Um, here we then have, if it's one password secret reference, go and read from the CLI. And read from CLI is where the sort of bulk of the logic is happening of actually going and getting the one password integration. So for integrating one password, it's actually uh, pretty straightforward. You, all you have to do is use the op read command. So you can execute that from the CLI. You can execute this from the process of a different application. So in this case, uh, JetBrains is abstraction layer for general command line. So I can use general command line to run the OP CLI you installed whenever you set up your one password integration. Um, at that stage, then I just check at the output if it's a successful exit code of zero. Then I know to just take that token. It'll be I just take the first line of standard out, just uh, and then um, otherwise uh, go and get the or ju just log an error saying hey. Uh, we expected this reference. And then as we've seen, whenever I was uh, running with the invalid credential, um, we got a notification saying unable to read a uh, secret reference. And so at that stage, then um, you, uh, the user gets sort of feedback there Im immediately saying, hey, I wasn't able to get the secret reference from one password. So let me go back and update the settings by like clicking on the action in the, the notification bubble. So some additional error handling uh, goes on there, but this is sort of like encompassed within uh, how we're uh, going through and reading the password. Okay. Um, that, that's where the bulk of the logic is. Uh, there's project setup. A lot of the references we had that used token util before, I've updated those references for token util. Uh, to instead use the PAT provider. So if PAT provider is accessible because we have PAT provider as a project service. Um, so we have a project service called project context service. And that project service holds uh, some member variables such as PAT provider, which is like the current state of things. So it will always check from the latest settings. Um, here in do a context service, so what we have is optimization. So instead of actually going and resolving the token, we just check whether there is a string inside of the password store, or we check if there is inside of the persistent settings, if there was a secret reference stored. And if there's a secret reference stored, then we know that do has been configured. And if there's anything that's not null or blank inside of the 
a keychain store and we know the duo plugin has been configured and that's like uh, this is a check that we just have in uh, different areas of code um where we'll run that uh, sort of ahead of time is about there... that i i think i didn't leave it i didn't leave a comment on the merge request related to this but i i add a comment uh, suggesting that maybe we can remove the path provider. Uh, but now that, it, that I look at it and see that we have two places in the code base where we're going to cache the result, let's say, or cache if the token is null or if the reference, I, I wonder if we could couldn't move that caching mechanism to the path provider and therefore actually give it a kind of reason to exist instead of having it in the in the yeah. token util or to just try to refetch the token from one password every time. Yeah, for so sure. So once it's loaded and it's not, unless it's updated, it should, we can always keep it in memory. Yeah, and I think that the, there's a benefit there as well because if you have one IDE, even if you have multiple projects open, <clears throat> you get the benefits of, if you multi open multiple projects, you don't have to do the lookups every time for those projects. So once you do it in the IDE, the plugin runs and you can have that setup happening in the background thread whenever projects are opened. Yeah. But you, you're you not having to do the, like the, you're able to cache it at the application level instead of the project level. Right now we sort of mix what's project level and not project level for packs. Yeah. But if we can move accounts to the application level, I think that's for, it'd be worthwhile. So I actually opened a ticket around that, uh, doing that as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But no. You're right. Let's. Let's. We can focus on the MR at hand. <laughs> so, what I'll do here is. I can start going through the the remaining comments probably. Yeah, we can do that. Cool. Okay. So this one here is. Mm -hmm. So this uh, here I mentioned uh, this, I've actually made this change locally and I may need to just push this down. Yeah. I know we, I know we try to often have like a, as much as small as possible. And I, I agree with it, but sometimes in, in a case like this, uh, I feel confident reviewing those merge requests even though they're bigger. Yeah. Uh, and with the how we work at GitLab creating follow-ups issue, I'm not too worried about like some comments that being addressed right away. But in my head, if a, if a file has already changed, I, I don't mind. I don't mind it being changed a bit more. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, okay, no, I I I tend to agree with that as well. And I think a lot of it is just growing pains of trying to move over to the like the nice Kotlin way of doing things and using trying to move to using coroutines and moving away from having Java singleton pad like we because we have a lot of like yeah. Java file singletons right now in the project which we're trying to move away from. Um, so yeah. no, I'm happy to do that. And yeah, so the change there for just for the sake of the call and anybody watching, um, if I jump to it in the diffs view. What we can see is the project startup here. Cool. Yeah. So in project startup right now, I was trying to keep my changes in the minimal. Um, but one of the things is there's optimization that we can make here if we go ahead and make the change um to run things in a background thread in some cases. And so we can if we actually look at my diff here. So what the what ends up happening is I've moved uh I've created an ex ex execute and so right now we have project context service which really could move to a project service to use a singleton instance but that can be a refactor for later um so we just need it and then once that project that instance of this is available what you can do is everything in the suspend function is running on EET but in the by default to be running on whichever thread is available. Um, but we can use the default dispatcher to happen inside the regular sort of background process instead of the EDT dispatcher, which the JetBrains process we use sometimes. And so whenever we switch over then to this process, what it allows us to do 
is operations inside of here. So we can have operations inside of here, which uh, are blocking and stuff like that. But because it's a suspend function and we're, we've then changed the context it's executing under, we'll then wait and then it'll yield the results whenever it's available. And that's just me trying to make like an optimization so we can start optimizing or so we can start running things like later per se, because yeah. right, right now what we end up doing is you, every time we're adding stuff in like license checks and stuff like that, we're actually slowing down the project startup of things. And so that this, this refactor is just trying to like make a closer step to that d direction. Whereas like code suggestions, you may actually have disabled entirely. And if your code suggestion is disabled, we should not be slowing down project startup by checking if you're able and el like eligible to use code suggestions essentially. And so this is just like uh, working towards that. So yeah, and it sounds like you're happy enough with that as well. Um, yeah, so. I'm happy with that. I, I want us to start moving to, to an event or of an event-driven architecture for the settings and authentication yeah, uh, for sure. part of the, the plugin. So I'm happy with that. And it also makes sense because like reading from the one from one password could take time. We don't want to block the main thread too much. That's just... Sure. Um... Even even with reading from one password, what you end up getting is you get into a state where like one password makes it obvious. But one of the things we notice is that people with that were running early access uh like the EAP releases of JetBrains, uh whenever you do logger dot air that and whenever there's like slow EDT exceptions and stuff like that inside of JetBrains APIs we're using, those get like raised as exceptions and internal IDE errors for users. And we weren't seeing that until sort of like the 2024 releases of JetBrains where some of those warnings now happen by default, whereas previously it was only early access program users. And so now we're saying, well, yeah, there's these slow running operations that we have in our settings dialog or slow running operations and projects are up. And so some customers will get errors or some users will be getting errors and exceptions, but really there's no need to do that slow setup. And we get like backgrounded and like respect to those warnings that the JetBrains SDK is trying to give us. And I'm a, I'm happy we're doing it in a more in a proactive way for this merge request because we're we're never going to get a slow, um, a s slow call being performed on EDT for one password. But in reality, it is a slow operation. But yeah. we we would not have gotten the assertion, which made me think: Do we? That's that, that's a lot of scope. But should we by ourselves have the discipline to add kind of an an assertion that says? And this is a slow operation. Make sure it's executed on the, on the on the background thread. Um, so I think you know, this is just a thought that I a thought that I just had. Yeah, I think whenever we're running locally, it's nice. Whenever you like, whenever you're running the sandbox, you can see those exceptions happening as internal ID errors. And whenever we're noticing it, even in the sandbox, we should like create issues for it to track it. And then obviously we had previous times users would report it and then we'd investigate it at like one specific area. Um, but I think that like JetBrains warnings, sometimes like some of the like uh, verification results on the, the actual uh, plugin, like once you upload the release, some of the verification results like refer to it. But yeah, it would be great if we yeah. can have like uh, detect, you know how we like have static analysis through detect. If the tech yeah. actually do the lookup of like through the chain to say, hey, this is slow operation and you're right now within the EDT context, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, that would be that would be great. That might be a plugin. Yeah, it'd be a great, it'd be absolutely great idea for a plugin for Sonar Red. So cool. Okay. But so, you can resolve this thread. I'm happy with the, your diff. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. I'm assuming it's not well, like I think this also. This also resolves the thread just below. Oh no, it doesn't. Right. So yes, the in status panel we have the same type of thing. Yeah. Um, right. But you. Good. But sorry, but you've already moved it to a uh, execute pull on pull in pull thread. So that's. So I did. I did move everything over, and I had reverted that change. But I can revert the change to like get rid of it. I wanted to reduce the scope of changes in the MR. Yeah. You, re you reviewed it just before I reverted that change. I'm happy to restore it though mm. because you're sort of getting the performance improvement for, like, not for not much cost essentially. 
Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think we can revert it. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I can probably go back to that specific change. Because it, that's just extending the, because th there's already an executable pull thread in the in this class. So you're just extending the scope to be a bit wider. Um, yep. Just to cover the old when statement, essentially. Yeah. Uh, it's over a couple of commits, but that's fine. I could, I'll, we can just go in and make that change ourselves. Yeah, that's that's going to take. It's going to be a matter of seconds. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's see. Yeah, and then you just wrap the refresh in invoke later, and that will be correct. Yeah, then ship it. Cool. Yeah, and I think that's that's an example of like that's like an optimization you can make. And again, like that we you didn't notice it as much in the status panel class. Like we weren't getting errors there until you get into a state where the st if the status panel calls before the project settings or calls before the project startup is finished in the thread, you can get into states where this the status panel is the first thing that tries to receive a token. So then you get an EDT error there as previously, like it wasn't. Uh, with the, the native password store, you don't get the same warning. Now that said, you can actually get a different warning from the native password store, but it, like, it doesn't matter much since we're trying to like move with this old abstraction there. We should be able to eventually, we should, when it's more demand driven, we can move it so that like we're doing everything on the background threads and stuff in a way that is event driven. So, yep. so that's done. Okay, so this one here. So yes, the current class is only used for settings. Uh, how do you feel about this? This one, uh, this one for the purposes of the call, is I've introduced a new setting here for the one password seek reference. And so this is project setting tokens we don't store inside of the the settings. T the token, uh, the personal access token when we store that, we're storing it using token util to read to and write from the password safe. So previously we have like the token was totally separate here. And for me, it felt dirty to have token util do all of that password and stuff. I think going forward, it'd be nice if we had like the pad provider class really became like a GitLab account class or like a GitLab account yep. service. And so if that was an application service, then we could do caching stuff there. And then it knows how to retrieve credentials, but making token util, which is currently dedicated to wrapping the JetBrains password store with all of the one password stuff felt wrong to me. That makes sense. And uh, yeah, I think we could move the, I think it makes sense that the path provider becomes a whatever GitLab credential or whatever, uh, something like that service just to, yeah, because it, you're right. It doesn't feel right to have everything in the token, uti token util class. Um, that, it, it, that's also a trap with the util classes. Sometimes they, Util means nothing really. So the, these classes become huge. They have tons yeah. of behavior that they shouldn't have, and then you're stuck with them. But so yeah, I know you. So this one, I. So, Go ahead. I mean, I had a question about this whole uh, line seven to line fourteen, like the default token settings. Yeah, but I understand why why you did it. So, and I think it's, I hope it's it's temporary, and we actually do the the change we want to do. But um, it may it makes sense. Uh, so I, when I was doing the review, I was raising the idea of potentially just getting rid of the path provider class. But the more we look at the code, I think there is a case for there's a strong case for it to remain the code base, just maybe under a different name, and with a bit more 
abilities, like maybe caching the, the the token on spin red to avoid slow operations. Yeah. Uh, it makes makes sense makes sense for now. I I don't really mind it. Um, okay. I don't mind it. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. In that case, what I'll do for now is I'll refactor the currents because I don't think we need the currents. So yeah, if we if we don't need it, we we probably should just not include it. But uh, but yeah. Yeah. So. Rand old F seven. I mean, if I have that on my keyboard, I I tried to I tried <laughs> that it, it doesn't work somehow. Like I, I get this from message because I'm trying to investigate like JetBrains uh, SDK, mm -hmm. and then I try to go up definitions, but I like, I just can't because and it tells me to do this shortcut it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's because I filtered down from project files to project production files because I didn't care about testing. Mm. I was searching at one stage. So what I guess I can do is I can probably find and replace this. If I start off there. Well, not really, because the, that that test here doesn't make sense now. Um, yeah. Unless you update it to be, because you're, you're already mocking the, the field and you're doing it and assertion, an assertion on it. So okay, that's, you're not, we're not testing anything. Yes. Yeah, this test doesn't make sense anymore. That's tr very true. Yeah, I guess this one password secret reference, what I'm trying to do is say that this class in general, it's not needed anymore. Right. So like with this, this utility method makes sense. So maybe we should have a utility method on this. And we should like assert that this returns something. Yeah, because it would not, it would not return if it's not valid, right? Yeah. So right. Yeah, I think we're... So that's only one use of it's valid. Maybe I would just rename the the if we get rid of the the object, I would maybe just rename the method to explicit. Maybe get op reference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, these mocks don't make sense, as you said. So let's see. This class is going, I guess, actually. Uh, is it? Do we still want to test the... We should test the function. Yeah, maybe we can use the this, the, this file still. Yes, okay, cool. So we have test coverage for this in that we already test OP secret reference. Okay. Well then I'm if it's already tested there, I'm open to just leave it at that for now. Yeah. So the because yeah. it, so here's the code. Yeah, I think coverage. Oh go ahead, sorry. No, you're right. I was just gonna say, yeah. So what we have is for here we already have test coverage that says it returns empty strings. Mm. And then that then calls that function here. So maybe the I don't know if this this could potentially even be a private function, like where the usages are within this, like for the is valid check. Mm -hmm. I mean, is okay. So, okay, so there is only one usage outside of the the. Oh, okay, um, I, I don't think, I don't mind leaving the tests in the the workplace the workspace settings. Uh, because unless we believe this method is going to be used everywhere, um, I I don't mind. Well, that makes sense.
There's one usage of that. And that could probably even be changed. Right? To say not. Where is it used? Is it used in the, the sending panel? Yes. Yeah. Well, then we could. We could have a boolean matches. Yeah. <laughs> but like if you want, I don't think the object it itself is that oh yeah, that makes sense. Let's go. I like. Yep. And then we could probably refactor this so it moves. Right, where do how, how do I move this? I never use the move, so So what are you trying to you're trying to move yeah. into a different file or yeah, I was. That's fine though. I'll just cut it. Oh not in the configurable. <laughs> So, for now, it, it still makes sense that the workspace settings thing, uh, the token is a sealed interface. But if we uh, we start to have a lot of behavior, maybe we'll unseal it and allow it to be declared, yeah. uh, also to be declared as, elsewhere. Uh, if it's get if it gets too big, but right now for keychain and one password, it, it's correct. But I think if we want to introduce another authentication method, yeah, uh, we should probably just split uh, this code. And so, and I think uh, realistically, uh, like I don't, well, uh, actually I, I want to add a wolf authentication. So we may revisit it soon in terms of what yeah. sense. <laughs> having an account service, which does, which calls the things may make sense. That's okay. I think, yeah, there's, we could maybe have a conversation around that. Yeah. And especially if we're introducing a, a, a get method, a get token method, sorry. Yeah. I think it I think then it also makes sense to just split it. The reason that I used at first I used the sealed interface for mm -hmm. the, the token settings because I, I expected us to do pattern match, pattern match on the the instance type and then extract the properties. But then you wrapped a behavior inside of the token settings, yeah. which I like. Mm -hmm. So and, be, and because in the end, if we're going to send this data to a downstream server, we're going to only send the token. We're not going to send anything else. So that everything's resolved on the client that we send it to the server. Yeah. So I think I think it then makes sense to split it because we're moving away from the original vision that I had. I and it in in a good way, it makes yeah. sense. I, I think like I, I wondered myself, like if we add into the to the interface, if we define like get bearer token or get authentication or get authorization header. And then if you can return those. And even for like OAuth, if we're doing OAuth, then we can do the like get the bearer token for OAuth, yeah. which looks slightly different to how we're getting bearer tokens for keychain and one pat like one password for personal like paths because th those are pat both paths, right? But OAuth yeah. is gonna look slightly different too. But I think, like you said, as long as you have a method in this interface to grab things, yeah. they just have like maybe the account service do the handling. Yeah, so. Right. And then, so that test coverage is co covered elsewhere now. Okay. So, and are we mocking the right thing now? I think you're going to have to mark the, yeah. Yeah. 
handy dandy mock method for mocking just sort of persistent settings. <laughs> I wonder myself up like I prefer using the describe spec style, and I know Ali like was one of the pre like previously the like the main maintainer was trying to like have people use describe spec more often, but using the J unit specs and the J unit provide like the 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 J units like annotations. And like the extension, like the JUnit extension for JetBrains, obviously it does a lot of stuff. Like, uh, what is it? It's like, um, there's like a test case class, which is like a mocks application and stuff for you. And it like does Yeah, that. I've, used, I've used that and I, I have an opinion on this. Um, mm -hmm. I think for unit test, uh, well, I don't like the fact that we have two, two um, testing framework or uh, yeah, testing libraries that we use. Like we have JUnit and then code test. I, I think that's confusing, but the the thing with the extending the test class that you're talking about is it's it's kind of heavy for some tests um it's heavy in the sense that to create like a headless platform with a project and where you can create resources and then they will be clear like it's heavy for let's say testing some like if yeah it's heavy for some tests we don't need it mm -hmm. but I also don't like the fact that we have two ways of doing tests. I don't think code test provides that much of a of a value to say like, oh, we should keep both. I think we should just use GUnit. That's a personal opinion, but mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, another a discussion for another day. <laughs> but, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I like personally, I prefer code test, but JUnit gives us a lot of, a lot of benefits. It should it, like yeah. code test is pretty for writing Kotlin in, but JUnit is yeah. Because they have the like, because there's all the extensions for the JPK, yeah. it's beneficial to use that. Because what ended up happening is this like test util. Because we're trying to write these like very very light tests, which don't need to be as heavy, we're ending up writing yeah. the test use kills the utils class, which is growing and adding things for mocking service, yeah. mocking application, and mocking settings. Which like maybe we like one of the opinions I've had is maybe the solution to that is that we could use a standardizing code test. Because we're we're trying to write light tests anyways, and it seems seems to be the case where we standardize and code test and we add in the bare minimum for like mocking the application and mocking project. Because that tends to be what's happening. And but because we have a mix of having like a bunch of singletons, we're having to use mock static in a lot of places. Whereas if we like define a sort of like a parents class instead of like override describe spec, then we could say override like uh like like a J like J JetBrains SDK spec. And if we had that, then that would like do the light, the, be the equivalent of the light test, you know. But yeah, I agreed. I think that it's sort of like we're, we're sort of like going. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Sure. yeah. I think standard the, uh, issue there would be good. My my only concern with the days mocks is that is that they don't really ref, they don't reflect what's really going on, and I think that's a result of maybe um that's may, that might be a result of how we. Sp structured our, our code as in the, the whole code base in the way that usually there is usually we would maybe have um like how do i say this there are things that there are there is code that uh, that is uh, like application logic application application code whatever that maybe should not depend on the on the JetBrains platform and maybe we should just have some sort of entry point that sends their data the minimum, the only data we need to a to an application service or project service, and then this one handles, yep. and those the the. Or I say this, the only is only responsible for the logic with and has minimum external dependencies, so then mm -hmm. we don't have to always create mocks for for everything. I think that's a, a way we could improve there. Yeah, for sure. But, but I agree with you on the code test thing that like they look nice. <laughs> they're nice to write. They're fun to write. But I, I will have to, we'll let's let's have a discussion at the time. But I think we we would be fit to have some sort of standard within the team that uh, about how we test stuff when we use the G units to test and when, or how how we want to approach it in the future. Yeah, for sure. Um. So I I think now we can resolve the we can resolve the comment related to the one password secrets reference object. Yes. I think so. I'm just gonna run uh detect because I changed quite a couple of files, like a, a number yeah. of files. So 
Yeah, let's resolve it. Did you check that tests that tests are passing? Uh, I did not. I think I only included the detect uh just locally right now. I can run tests in my ID while it's going. Yeah, it's fine. Since we still we're still at a small scale in the project, we cannot run all the tests in like under a minute, which is fun. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I I I like it too. Like you said, I think we're the way we're mocking stuff in some cases is showing that like some of the classes are doing too much and some of the classes have too many extra dependencies. Right. And it's also sometimes it's it's hard to pinpoint when you should and when you shouldn't mock. I think yeah, that's that's a, a challenge in it. Not a, not necessarily a challenge, but it's a interesting thing to think about in running tests. It's like it's like should I really mock this or should I use a real or whatever like like when I was testing the code style for for the code style uh adjust indent for the, the, the suggestions. I think I, I, I having two diamonds running <laughs> But well, when I wrote the indent indentation test, I could have mocked the code style manager, but then yeah. I would not I would not have been testing anything. I would only have been testing the previously determined behavior. So yeah. no absolutely. There's... I think uh yeah, I think well yeah, it all depends like what cleanup and stuff happens. If something's like if something's stateful, that can be an issue, but uh, like I prefer run it myself as well. You know, but like, I think having, we have end-to-end -end tests and we have unit tests, but we don't define when we should be writing integration tests. So it's definitely something that we should revisit as a team, I think. Well, yeah, it's hard to I think, I think you bringing up integration te tests is is a, is a is interesting because I think what we should use, I think we should only use the, the, the JetBrains platform, JetBrains test, uh, test class that they provide for integration tests. Because it goes with the, you're also you integrating you're seeing how your code integrates with the, the platform code. Uh, it's, it's yeah. I'm looking right sense. now. Right now, there's only three tests that are marked as IT, and those are all ones we wrote around API clients at the minute. So and then, as there, there's yeah, there. and then <laughs> we have as well. So there's a few end ten suites. So hmm. I, I think. Yeah, with that would be interesting to revisit. For sure. Yeah, we should definitely look at that. So yeah, this is remote robot. So All right. Um, Yeah, it's that resolved. Yeah, I resolved it. Thank you. So, so this one here, I'm saying that right now the settings for integrate one password could be in another panel. I tried to do this for another MR for like the code suggestion settings to like specific settings, but you end up having like one or two checkboxes. So I don't think it's worth having a separate panel until we revisit like what the UX looks like. I know Tristan opened up a, a, like a thing around like UX for extensions. And I know Dasha yeah. and we have a couple of like folks on UX that are looking at like, hey, how do we manage the UX at all? So I think you're just giving feedback on, hey, I have a bunch of settings that's unrelated in JetBrains, but in VS Code, you have like a list of settings and it's like, you have like a list of settings and like, that's what you get. But whereas with JetBrains, you can have like a very pretty UI around giving settings to users. Which I think we should use, right? Yeah, and you, 
I like that you opened an issue earlier that's called, I think, revisit the authentication settings panel or whatever. I think you hit the nail on the, right on the head with that. It's uh, like I was saying, maybe we should have a better UX for the, the one password integration, but I think you raised a, a higher concern, which is our authentication settings probably should be reworked uh, overall, like the UX of it. I think it makes me think that after my, my issues for my soul 17.1, I might reach out to probably you and Laura to see like how we can improve this because I have, I will work on the issue about improving the verify setup button. So I think we, I can do a two birds, one stone with this one. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be great for sure. Cool. But yeah, close that. Okay. This has been this... resolved. Oh, so yes, it's already resolved. I guess I had a pending comments there. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's a bug. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Great catch. Uh, yeah, let me find this code. I thought I fixed it, and maybe it's in my stash somewhere. All right, so host, host. Yeah, okay, it's fixed. Oh, but wait, was it in the... <laughs> you know, it's in the main code. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Uh, class. It's in verified authentication. Oh, no, it's wait, it's back. So you fixed it. Nice. Phew. Okay. Yeah, this is, I mean, <laughs> it, it is what it is. We can, uh, there are, the reason I, I raised the nitpick is because there we already have uh, we already use a name parameter. So it's like if we're already using a name parameter, we could just put the string there, but that's not blocking. And uh, I I think you can resolve it. Well, sounds good. Now just checking our calendar there. Um, I know we've gone over on our time, but I'm happy to continue going if you are. If yeah, you I have time. Bounce, I have can... time also. Cool. Yeah, but yeah, we can you can resolve this. It's uh so that I. It right. might make sense so, to add you... to the bundle. What do you think of adding it to the bundle? That would make sense. Yeah. There's another issue. There's another uh, bundle related task as well that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I had to write it too. Like Constant, Constance and Kathleen, are, I feel like, how do I say this? In Java, it's common to refactor like a magic number, a magic string to be a constant because you have no way of knowing what's what's what is it what it is in the in the just by just looking at the code. But yeah. sometimes in in JetBrain in a Kotlin, sorry, when it's only like a string, sometimes you can just use name parameters, and you achieve the same thing. Yeah. Now that that doesn't work every time because maybe you have it like a timeout variable, and then you. You want to specify like that it's in milliseconds or whatever, but I, I'm a yeah. massive fan of uh, named variables myself. So, right, yeah, it's like, yeah, in a case where you have like title equal, I think you can just put it there as an example. Like, we know it's the title. Um, but yeah, that's one of the things I, I, I like a lot about Kotlin is or whatever language that supports it. I like name parameters because I sometimes I don't have to name my variable and just use the argument name. It's my favorite Eureka factor comments in TypeScript on Mars is people says, hey, can we use objects for this? as like named parameters. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Some people use a partial in TypeScript to, or partial, or they use, or they try to pass sometimes object to their, to some methods, JS object to just, yeah, to just be able to, to do default values and to, Use name parameters. Okay. All right. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Well, yeah. Technically, we should be using, I guess, the bundle for these types of things too. So I've not read about that. Uh, is there what's the major benefit for a bundle? Is it reusing Inter strings? Let's say inter internationalization. Okay, so if we were to support it, we would just we could just re-implement yeah. uh, like GitLab bundle dot f a French and then just write this this stuff. Exactly. That makes sense. 
So we're just doing that in in case we decide to. Yeah, and that makes sense. I guess for settings, um, like I like to do it, but for other, we we don't use bundle for everything besides settings. So I guess maybe here we just inline it. Hmm. So. Oh. Um, yeah, the thing about token utility, I think we discussed it earlier. It, it, you removed it, but Anyways, I think it should be in the path provider. Yeah, it shouldn't be in the... Yeah, the, on, the only problem with the caching... Yeah, I think you should mention it there. Like, the only problem with caching is if we fix it right now and it's been cached at the at this level. When I, yeah, if, if this is, like, this is, applies to the whole application, so it caches it for the whole app. So I don't want to just revert it without moving to the project-based thing. Because if someone changes their settings in one window and like project in one project, that applies to all projects. But if we mm. caching, uh, like, yeah, I think we need to define that behavior. Cause I, I guess I don't know what the exact behavior would be here. I got because we're not going to like trigger an event. Well, we would trigger an event when it changes, but that would be a project event, I believe. And that's a, is that, is that an application? It is right now. It, right now, sadly, it is an application event because. Token lives at the application scope yeah. right now. In which case, th technically, that should be fine to cache because changing, so maybe... it, changing it would break the cache on the application scope. So I could. But I, I think could... we. I think, yeah. I we yeah, should I... move these things to project. Cool. Yeah, we sh I don't know when. I don't. We have to take the, the time to do it sometimes. Just say project are not, uh, authentication is now handled at the project level. Uh, yeah. There is an issue that I have related to this. <laughs> But I don't know exactly which one, and my search isn't quite specific enough. I know which issue you're talking about. I just can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably it. Cool. Well, yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is just personal preference. You can resolve, you can close or not. I just, I always find it weird when I see pattern matching on true. Uh, <laughs> that it does, it does, it just doesn't feel right. But it's I, I, I yeah. So the <laughs> like if the, I like assignments to one better than I like if else. Yeah. So, I, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, I think when I, when, yeah. Usually I just do that. It, it like makes sense, to, more sense to read, I think. But it's super nitpicky. Yeah, it's, <laughs> the, 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 the line formatting that it made me change to is probably why I did the true. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which is fine. It, it's okay. Yeah. So we could, yeah. Cool. Solve that. Okay, so we should create a get token on token settings interface. Do we think we should do this now or as part of the uh, project follow-up on? I don't think this will be done with with the project follow-up, um, but because I, I don't think if you, maybe me and you will remember, but it's not obvious in the issue that like you should do this. Um, Right now, I don't have a strong opinion. I mean, it works. I've tried the the thing, the feature. It works. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's already 
starting to I'm open to do that in a, in a follow up. Uh, I'm open that, but I. Yeah, I guess does this one have? Yeah, I can create a follow up and just refactor this. Should 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 yeah. the clients factory just use pad provider for now, like and like do that as a follow up? Or do you want me to? Well, I thought I th honestly I thought it would I thought it would use the 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 when I designed it in Chile I thought that the factory would call the provider um. So I didn't mind, but I understand why you did it the way, you, like that. That makes sense. Um. Oh, I think, but I think yeah, this can be addressed in a. Sorry, I think what you're saying is that this token could just be part of, like inside of the token settings, right? Yeah. Yes, it could. Yes, that's what I mean. But, but, like, in the sense that if you, okay, if we're saying. Let's merge this and then address the this comment after, like right after, just so you kind of, just so the the main feature is merged. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think it's how you, how you, it's how you see it. I I I'm totally fine with moving this into the token settings interface. I mean, yeah, I would, I would do, I would do that. I think, I think right now it makes more sense that we have a, a get a get token method in the settings, but um, we yeah, or that we or if we don't, maybe we could use a pet provider. Yeah. Oh, uh, we actually just want a raw token, actually, not a bear token, I suppose, right? Yeah, it would just be get token. What do you think of get personal? Uh, should we name it get personal token in case we... I mean, we can rename it later, but if we we want to support all that, it's not a personal access token. So yeah, that was my intention though, because this is going to be the raw personal access token rather than the OAuth token. I feel like I think for me, like I guess having like well, like, they're both bearer header, right? So I guess token is fine because we're always gonna like interpolate it that way. Or I've already I've seen in code bases people use get plain token just to mean like a get like but it, I guess at this point we doesn't really matter. Something that, that gets me is unauthenticated. This doesn't support unauthenticated. It always assumes you're gonna want a bearer token. So technically you can just give empty token, I guess. Do you like as an empty because right now we're actually saying bearer space. So then you get an invalid path. Whereas if you don't authenticate, you get a different error. So then that would be changing the error that you get. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say val token equals this. I'm not a fan of this of this uh, way of instantiating instantiating clients. Or the the LMS operator. Uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the, how how we instantiate the the instantiate the Apollo client. Like I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. But it's not not because of how we do it. It's because of how the library is designed. I I don't like that we specify headers and URLs before making a request yep. because, and th there might be some something I, I don't understand uh, behind it, but I don't like as we do that. Yeah. I don't like that we have to do that. <laughs> yes, agreed. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's 
we can revisit that probably at one stage. I'm trying to think. I don't know if we can because there was a reason. That's... There was a reason I did it this way, but I can't remember. <laughs> I guess. No, but it's. I don't think you can. It you can uh, specify a URL on. Uh, on uh, on request for the GraphQL API. I, I just don't think it's supported. <laughs> like I uh, I've tried, but I. Is I couldn't find any way to do it. it. Yeah. Oh, no, that's in the constructor, though. I don't know if you can add that during. I don't know. The only thing I figured out, I, th I thought we could do was like run queries. But. Well, I mean, each implementation could, each class could implement the get token method. So I don't think it needs to be abstract. Of course, yeah. And then the... Yeah, uh... yeah, and then we can just implement it. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, I can. We can. We can just return value. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because we're adding some sort of logging. Yeah. I like the logging, but yeah. Yeah, makes sense. That's it. Yeah, I think we can just rename the. I rename the prop. I know. I was just saying. I think maybe we can just rename the read from on password CLI to just implement to be get token. This implementation is hilarious now. <laughs> yeah, that's why I yeah, but <laughs> but I think it will make sense in the. <laughs> I think I think we will make it make sense. Uh, that's my prediction. <laughs> but I know for now it's. Yeah, I agree. How was that, Amar? So. I think it's three nine seven. Nope. Oh, seven nine. Yep. Makes sense to document it because it will get removed or else. Yep. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, I agree. Yep. So I just um, do this default here. Works. <laughs> since, it, since it's really bare anyways, and the comments is right at the top of the file, and there's yeah. not much. Confusion for folks. Yeah. Okay. 
Estou a pensar em dizer mal de novo. That's why I can... The thing I like about this now is that at, uh, the reading the token now is from like you could use a single single method to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I wonder if any tasks broke with that. Mm. I don't think they should have. So, so we get token or empty. The problem now might be that there are some tests in path provider that should be in the uh, work workspace settings test because they're essentially we're testing the. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. What's it? What do we lock in here? We just mock the like backend stuff. That's fun. Do we already have tests for workspace settings? Oh no. No, okay. we didn't have any tests. Uh, before this merge request, it was only uh, like a single a sing single getter. For... Cool. Okay, so for Pat Provider, I'm trying to think of the coverage we want for Pat Provider still. And so with default token settings, and we mock the settings, we mock the token call. I, th I think the coverage would be yeah, I the think default. This half here. Testing. With... Oh yeah, so, this this whole context could be in the app provider. Uh, be right back. I'm going to get some water. Oh, that's all good. I'm back and I drew it in. Love it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Probably be the other way around. Should probably define it in another class. What did you think of having like a helper method for like the shared behavior, by the way? Uh, sorry, what? Oh, what did you think of having like this helper method here? Like this function that just does all the shared context? No, I like it. You, I mean, you add the, the need to reuse makes sense and uh yeah but i would not share the the method between the oh are you sharing it between test because i think it takes a pet provider right my yeah i don't think that i don't think it makes sense that it takes a pet provider in this test and yes i need to refactor yeah. the test that's a good point Because here it should only take the, I think it should only take the, the settings, because there is only to provide the token. Yep. 
But that's when I saw that you when I saw that you had an extension function that used backtick. I was like, that's when I wrote you that I appreciate that you <laughs> know the little tricks. <laughs> yeah, the extension functions are quite cool. Oh yes, they they're the best. Yeah. But yeah, because sometimes, like a, a Java dev can write Kotlin code pretty easily, but the code will look like Java and. That makes me sad. So when I see so I see you write code and use like delegation and like backtick for function extension functions. I gotta break uh, my bad it... habits. <laughs> Sorry. I have to break break my bad habits as, a, as someone who's doing Java for a while. Even <laughs> I remember when I did uh, Java Dev, I like moved from doing Java. Uh, like I was like I st I didn't want to do Java until Java eight came out, and then I wanted to refactor the entire code base of like a giant monolith to Java eight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, because when you look at when you look at Kotlin code that's written in a in a Java way, it hurts my brain a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so when I see your code and it's written in a like in a Kotlin way, I like I uh, it makes me happy. Very good, I'm glad. And likewise, I see the same from your MRs. Uh, so here I think we can just remove the yeah. Cool. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think since we have this coverage here, we don't need to have as much in the yeah. in the path provider. Yes, what do we care about in path provider now? So give an empty. Honestly, seat. honestly, I would only test the the maybe the. I don't think we care about much, to be honest. Maybe only the default, like let's say when there is no parameter, but the the like the method, the test, the get token method is pretty dumb. Like I don't even know if I would test that, to be honest. Like you could make a case to not test it since it's only it only calls a getter. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But I guess that's that's on this one. You you it's your MR. You'll be the judge. Um. But. Yeah, I guess like behave like valid secret doesn't matter anymore, probably, right? No, I think I think that's too that's too close to the yeah, like the, the workspace setting. Okay, cool. And then these ones make sense because it's testing like what happens. But this one is no wait. There's no test in the the context. I think you can remove the like the. Yeah, uh, there is no test in your in your, what you're in the current block. Like it's only before each and then nothing. So I think both can be removed. Yep. Cool. cool. I guess it's actually yeah not in this MR but there will be a case to to extract it uh, elsewhere uh, <laughs> but we're not doing this now <laughs> it's... okay cool Stand down, Luna. Good girl. Those annoying dogs bother me too, Luna. Okay, so, right, so I'll come to that chain. That's one thing. That's two comments down. Because we I had a comment related to pet provider tests that maybe where maybe where two should be a bit closer to works uh, token settings, but now they are. So that's like a two birds, one stone.
Okay, so I think we can resolve the can resolve this one. I guess I'll I'll do it. Okay. And then we can resolve the I left a question that maybe we could get rid of the path provider class, but that's not happening. We just discussed. And you would change the Apollo client factory. So that's correct. I think you could move the test. You did, we did that. Oh, we're getting to the end. Yep. Sure. All right. So the next comment is yours. Unrated to both good to both. Yeah, I took I took off two lines and okay. that doesn't break anything in them or anything, but I could revert that if we want to simplify them. Nope, it's done. Cool. Like there are cases where like where the MR is just unreviewable because like it, too much has been done. But in this case it's straightforward and things like this. I, I'm a fan of the boys the boy scout rule rule where you just leave leave the playground cool. cleaner. So Things like this, I, I, I it's all right. Uh, Laura, Laura would be a fan of that too. I think she, uh, like I, I told her whenever she joined, I was telling her I like camping. So I think anybody's doing any camping, she it, like knows that rule. So yeah, I, lo I love that rule. I like when I, if I'm working on a class and I think like indentation is not correct or whatever, I'll, I'll fix it in the MR even if it's unrated. Like, because I, while well, I believe in small MR, I don't like opening MRs to just remove white lines. So like, I, I, I just, I just don't like it. Yeah. Anyway. Right. And if you wait to save all the little paper cut chain, if you like all the paper cuts, if you wait to solve them all at once, then you have a giant MR anyways. At the end of yeah. it. And also like once I'm I like it's it annoys me right now. I'd rather fix it now than wait because if I wait, I'm not doing I'm not doing it. I move on to the next task and then it's just not getting done. Yep. Uh, if you use pet provider, I think this is this is not relevant. And okay, you closed it. Makes sense. Uh, that, uh, that's because the mocks are now separate because I have like split the tests. If you use with if you okay, yeah, you split the test, so it makes sense. Yeah, All right, so this this is an interesting one. Um, I tried I tried the I checked out the the MR and I tried to use the one password integration. And when I enter an invalid one, I get two notifications. And I think you raised that in a in a comment. Of, yeah. So before, uh, in trip. before. Yeah. So before I didn't do the notification in there. I just did logging. But now I was like, oh, well, what if I do show that notification? And really, what we could do is we could stop notifying once we know they didn't configure anything, right? We like, we could actually like just not even try to read. Actually, let me think. What is the yeah? What is the case? So if you have invalid, then you get it. Well, the but in the comment I said that I said maybe we should return and let and let like the Kali, the 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 Kali yeah, and handle style. it in the, Um, sorry, I'm saying that's like the Golang style where like you just return error. Yeah, yeah. The reason is that maybe we don't want to display a sufficient every time there is an error. So that was my concern and. The fact that it raised two two notification when I entered the wrong password or or if a valid one that was then deleted, um, I don't know. I didn't like it, but that's like a huge, that's like a huge edge case, right? Where you the settings tell you you're wrong and you decide to do it anyway. Okay, so as something's wrong, and if I quit this, I think what you're saying is when you start the project for the first time, but you had a persisted wrong one. Is that right? Yeah, I think that maybe what I did. No, I, I think. So I get two notifications at that stage. No, but I, I got a duplicate unable to read secret reference when I. Oh. I, when I say I did apply in the settings for a a wrong <laughs> password. Is that because of my other? But it, it's it's when the, the what happened is I, I had the personal access token in the the safe let's say mm -hmm. and then i switched and entered an invalid um invalid token so maybe there is something there that yeah so i switched from a, a keychain token to a one an invalid one password secret reference which yeah. caused two notifications to happen so 
it might be in the chase that we don't need to worry right now, but it's one of those things that I don't like when they come back a few months and then you have to handle it. You raise it in the merge request, but then you have to handle it <laughs> because, yeah. Yep. yeah. But, um, Sorry. like I said, uh, I... That's the EVT. That's the configurable thing, which is going to be longer. Well, I want to clarify that... Uh, Maybe this is probably this might be out of scope of the 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 MR because I, I, yeah. it will doing that would require refactors that are out of the scope of the of this of this MR because even when you read keychain on the keychain there are errors that could happen. Yeah, Pro there probably are like maybe IO exceptions will not. Uh, go go to the keychain entry and keychain access and delete the like or like revoke the permissions to always read. Uh, okay. You get all the same errors that one password. Uh, all right. So, but also, there, yeah. usually people won't do this, right? So usually people aren't going to go directly to keychain access and revoke the JetBrains permissions. But if they do, you get the same errors. It's because people yeah. like, have to always allow in the keychain. And then the system keychain read comes back really quickly, even though it's technically a slow operation. So you also, so, as you get from one password, you get the same for if it's your first time including the password. Mm, all right, so we can, I mean, we can resolve this with this comment, but I think the, I think there's still something. I would like I think to there's still something there. Yeah, yeah. I would like to summarize what do. I think there's one case that we can, that is in the scope of the summer maybe, because the, the case, Let's see, so if I close that and open the project again with the invalid one, I think we shouldn't have two on startup, right? Is that the two on startup is probably more likely to happen, right? Like if your token gets- well, Maybe I ran into some weird case. Um, because this this would be more likely to happen. Well, actually, no, you don't get unable to read reference if it's invalid paths. But, but I like, I, I don't mind the two notification here. Um, I okay. actually don't mind. Okay. I actually don't mind them because what what when I said I had duplicate notification was twice mm -hmm. the same, unable to read. Okay. Um, but the the two notification there, I think it makes sense because then you say credentials are invalid, but then you have a you get told why they are. Yeah. Like that's that's actionable. Um, so let's close this for now and let's see in the future what happens. Um, at least give the issue reference and then it'll be something that we can see in the issue comments. Yeah. You know, and so we'll resolve that though. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this should be in bundle. So well, I mean, if we don't, I mean, good. Up to you. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to open up a follow up item for. for notification messages. Yeah, that's like, I should have put non blocking there. That, that's not blocking. All good, all good. All right. Uh, There's also the, another one like this, uh, just under, so maybe you want to include it in the follow-up. Can do. Yeah, I'll actually just take all the unblocking ones, maybe. I'll just leave them for now and then do the like resolvable function. This is great. It's only four comments left. And how many did we start with? <laughs> cool. Okay. So it doesn't matter that it's already logged to standard error. Yeah, that's a maybe that's maybe a that maybe a question can answer now. I is when you log something to logger that warn you okay no I understand. So I didn't see that you didn't log the whole exception. 
I thought you already did in the the one. Okay, yeah. so that's something I missed. So we could do it that way, probably. Yeah, we could do it that way. I think that's probably fine. You know, if they're getting execution exception, then maybe we want to show up an idea dot log so we can ask them for details, right? Yep, I like that. Have it debug only. Mm -hmm. the I say run it again with debug enabled. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm trying so I'm I can't wait for us to have like proper error handling mechanism for whatever like authentication and everything because I I see a lot of tickets open and I'm like like I need some I need something precise to help me diagnose absolutely right? no for sure I think yeah, a lot of users are running into issues relating to like the edge case that you fixed recently around like project settings opening. Sorry, yeah, kids are screaming, dogs are barking. And Annie was yelling, so I wanted to make sure she didn't help. Okay. So it sounds like she's the good dog in, and Luna has good recall. So Luna's name was said. I'm sure Luna already listened. Um, yeah, so this one is, should this be here? Yes. Yeah, I found it weird that when creating the panel, we, we run that method, but yeah. yeah. There's no like, I can't just set that empty state because what I need to do there, I'll show you. So when we're going through here, what we have is, I hate how we have a bunch of lead init variables here. I really think we should like refactor half those into like objects that we pull in or something, but like that's going to be <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, yeah. a lot of changes. But what ends up happening is we have this late init variable for the text. Mm -hmm. We want to set that. So initially what we do is we set that text to like, hey, it's restored. Because the default case, you're not going to have the integration enabled. So we're just going to say the password is stored if there's anything there, right? Mm -hmm. so hmm. That actually, we'd actually never see the text. I don't think <laughs> I think that that's uh what I'm saying is not true any longer. So what the the purpose was though is that for like the default case where you don't have the personal access token setting set up yet, that mm -hmm. it would show you like the state to say loading. So whenever it comes up, it would say loading. And then if if we later go and check the settings. And the settings is, we could probably just check the settings here and set what the state is, actually. All right, so I could say like- it's... Wait, I've never, okay, so I'm, yeah, I've never seen that loading text. Oh, sorry? Oh yeah, the, the empty text is new. Previously we had no empty text and what I wanted to do is inside of this MR, I wanted to improve that. There's has like a, a iteration. So I could say mm -hmm. this, Um, okay, yeah. And then we don't need that anymore. Not oh, great then. Cool. Because yeah, that was a bit confusing. I think like mid like between the factors, I ended up not needing it anymore uh, mm. because like the settings is like persisted state. It's so whenever you open it, but like all the code happens the first time you go through. But in some cases, it depends on the state of a different component. <laughs> There's obviously like right now we use settings every time, but those settings are persisted. So you change if you change the settings, it's persisted. Like as you do that thing, and like not pending, like applying or anything. Like some of the settings are actually changed immediately. Like for like personal access token is changed immediately upon change, right? So if you on change, mm -hmm. that that can get happen immediately, um, as long as you like, as other like with other stuff happening. So that's fine. I, I think anything else around that is like out of scope and captured by the yeah. other. Guys. Oh my God. And the other comment you already most, I think. Uh, 
only thing left is the, if you go down a little bit, I had a, I had a comment where I said, document how it works, but you already kind of did that in the, the other MR. So that's resolved. And then create the changelong entry. I think that's like the last thing, unless it's been done and I've not seen it. Nope. You're definitely right. I may have just forgotten that. Yeah, I don't have a but chance. After that, I, I, let's just make the pipeline green and retest everything, make sure it works after the refactors, and then I'm Sounds super good. happy to merge it, to approve and merge it in this, in this state. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Sorry that you went so long, but I think it was good to just talk through the stuff. I really appreciate you pairing with me as well. Yeah, for sure. I If we did the, this thing async, it would have taken too long. I'd rather we pair and get it done. Uh, there is a last thing I want to talk to you about. You were not uh, at the meeting yesterday, but you left a note talking about the yeah, LSP for JetBrains. Yeah, do you want me to cut oh, off? Sorry. And then we talk about LSP stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. I did 